So what are the airspeed limitations in class Bravo airspace? That's coming up next in this video. Hi everyone, Carl Valeri with Aviation Careers Podcast, and this is the pilot interview course, episode number two. We're gonna talk about the airspeed limitations in Class Bravo airspace, but we're doing a whole series on the questions that I asked during the pilot interview course. That's part of our career coaching. You can find out more information below in the show notes, and, uh, and don't forget, all the links are there so that you can find out information like what the federal aviation regulations are, et cetera. So let's get to our question. What are the airspeed limitations in Class Bravo airspace? So let's take a look at a chart at Class Bravo airspace. So first off, we always start with 250 knots below 10,000 MSL. 250 knots below 10,000 MSL. And that's really important because that's one of those rules that uh, you're going to have to follow anyway with Part 91. The other one too, by the way, is a question that every so often you'll hear in certain interviews, and I throw it in here, is that the airspeed limit is Mach 1, and that's 91,817. So 91,117 is 250 knots below 10,000 feet. So 250 knots below 10,000 feet, and then as far as the next airspeed limitation, when you're below the Class Bravo airspace, you need to be 200 knots at least, or the most, 200 knots. So below Class Bravo airspace is 200 knots. Also, if you're flying through a VFR corridor, you need, a, it's an airspeed limit of 200 knots. So a VFR corridor through Class Bravo airspace would be 200 knots. So let's review those airspeed limitations. Below 10,000 feet, 250 knots. Below the Class Bravo airspace is 200 knots. And in a VFR corridor in the Class Bravo airspace, 200 knots. The other one we throw in there is Mach 1 is an airspeed limitation. Again, that's every so often asked uh, during the, uh, some of these interview questions here. Again, the, we, ta we ask these questions during our pilot interview course, during our career coaching. And that interview course is actually coming out for the public uh, fairly shortly. Let's look at some examples of different places where we can see some of those airspace and airspeed limitations. Let's start with Denver International Airport. In Denver International Airport, what are the airspeed limitations there? Again, we start with 250 knots below 10,000 feet. Notice Denver actually is, and that's 10,000 feet MSL, 10,000 feet MSL. Well, Denver Class Bravo is above that, the top of it. So you can actually be flying at about 300 knots in, in, in Denver's airspace. By the way, that's another question in the commonly missed questions. The other thing too, as far as in Denver, you'll see below the shelf, there's a lot of shelves around there and you can get yourself in a little bit of trouble if you're in a jet, just in, in general in any Class Bravo airspace. Air traffic control is supposed to tell you if you're exiting Class Bravo, but sometimes they forget. So it's up to you to make sure that you know if you're gonna be going below Class Bravo airspace and you need to slow to 200 knots. This is one of those things when you get to the airlines, a lot of times we don't really look at those things as far as the airspeed limitations because you're, that's usually something we look on our VFR charts, but I want you to get used to that, especially flying at the airlines and also for the interview questions. So in Denver there, you can fly 300 knots. Now when you get below that 10,000 feet MSL, you need to slow down. You need to slow down to 250 knots. And then after that, if you're going below the Class Bravo, a shelf in the Class Bravo, you're gonna to have to slow to 200 knots maximum. So that's Denver International Airport. And we're gonna, and remember this airport because we're gonna talk about it in another question. So let's look at another example. The next example is Tampa International Airport. And Tampa International Airport, just as we said before, below 10,000 feet MSL, we wanna slow to 250 knots, and then if you're gonna be below the shelf in Tampa, you wanna to slow to 200 knots. Again, as you come through 10,000 feet MSL, it's going to be slowing to 250 knots, maximum speed. Then it's 200 knots below the shelf. And again, we're gonna throw in that Mach 1 as the max speed also, because some people do ask that question on some exams. And don't forget the links to all these uh, are gonna be below the video. 
If you have any questions about any of these, don't forget to go to aviationcareerspodcast.com, contact, or down in the comments below, leave a comment for us. This again is part of our pilot interview course, which is available right now to our career coaching folks that are out there. We're also gonna have that course come out. We have over 500 questions out there. You know, I've been doing this for about 20 years, helping people get ready for interviews, and I've noticed there's certain questions that most people get wrong. This is part of that, and there's a 10 commonly missed questions. Some of these are fairly simple questions, some people think, but when you're in an interview situation, sometimes you get a little bit nervous. So the most important thing I wanna leave you with is this, you really need to practice. And you need to practice these technical questions, you also need to practice all the other human resource questions. And we have those also coming up in the pilot interview course. Well, hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this video here. Don't forget to click below and subscribe. Click on the bell so you get notified every time one of these new videos comes out. We're gonna try to do one of these a week and make them real short like we have here. Again, Check out what the airspeed limitations are in Class Bravo airspace by also clicking on the links below to the FARs, the Federal Aviation Regulations. Well, we'll talk to you next episode. Safe flying out there, and don't forget to do something today to move forward in your career.